Hi, I'm Cheryl Smith, UNH Cooperative Extension Plant Health Specialist and the Director of the Plant Diagnostic Lab here at UNH in Spalding Hall. Let's get started on some hints for diagnosing plant problems. To successfully manage plant diseases, or any pest for that matter, we need to first correctly identify the cause of the problem. Once we know if a pathogen or insect is causing the problem, we can determine the best management techniques and the most effective time to use them. We can also determine if the problem might be caused by an environmental factor or some non-living factor, and then we wouldn't even have to use any kind of pesticides at all. The key tools for diagnosing plant problems are good observational skills. A 15 or 30x hand lens or loop can help you get a more detailed look at insects or fungal structures. There are lots of sources for loops online. You can even find some that are illuminated like the one shown in the photo here. There are several steps to diagnosing plant problems. First, before we can tell if there's something wrong with a plant, we need to know what the normal healthy plant is supposed to look like. Some plant varieties, for instance, may have unusual characteristics such as variegation or dwarfing. In this example, the green and white pattern on the leaves of this nasturtium are normal. It's the variety Alaska, a variegated variety. Next, we need to determine what the symptoms are and look for evidence of any signs of the pathogen. A symptom is any abnormal appearance of the plant. Symptoms can include leaf spots, as shown in the tomato leaf with early blight in the upper left, dead areas or blotches, as shown in the pachysander with volutella blight in the upper right, a mottled appearance, as shown in the lower left of a virus infection in a monk's hood leaf, or angular leaf spots limited by the veins, as shown on the columbine leaf in the lower right. Angular leaf spots are often associated with downy mildews, bacterial diseases, or foliar nematodes. Some other common symptoms include cankers or sunken areas on the trunk or branches of trees, and of course wilting. The next step in diagnosis is to look for signs. Signs are part of the actual pathogen itself. Most of the signs we can see with the naked eye or a magnifying lens are fungal. The upper photo shows the rust pustules on the underside of a hollyhock leaf infected with hollyhock rust. We would see yellow leaf spots on the upper surface as the symptoms. The photo in the lower right shows small black fruiting bodies in a black rot leaf spot on a grape leaf. The photo in the lower left shows the fruit of a hawthorn infected with quince rust. The orange structures are part of the rust fungus. How quickly the symptoms appear can often help us determine if the symptoms were caused by a plant pathogen or some non-living factor. In general, if the symptoms appear overnight or in a day or two, the problem is most likely a disorder. It's due to man-made or environmental factors, over-fertilization, pesticide injury, a late frost, etc. We usually don't see a spread or an increase of these symptoms over time. Symptom development takes longer with diseases caused by pathogens, sometimes weeks or even years. We usually do see additional spread of the symptoms, more spots on different leaves on a single plant or more nearby plants showing symptoms. The next key step in diagnosing plant problems is looking for any pattern to the symptoms. Again, in general, if there's a uniform pattern to the symptoms, the problem is most likely a disorder caused by non-living factors. Late spring frost and drought are two examples. If the pattern is not uniform, not the same on every leaf or plant, the problem is most likely due to a disease or insect. In this photo, every maple leaf has nearly the same degree of browning along the margin of the leaf. This is a typical symptom associated with drought or sometimes with high salt content in the soil. Pathogens would not produce symptoms this uniform. When diagnosing a plant problem, it's important to also note if the symptoms occur in a particular part of the plant. One-sided symptoms are usually associated with a disorder. The other patterns could be due to a disease, insects, or disorders, although scattered symptoms are usually due to diseases and insect pests. It is also important to note if the symptoms are limited to the inner or outer portions of the plant. In this example, the top of the tree exhibits thinning and dieback. It often means there's a problem with the trunk or roots. You should check the trunk and the base of the tree to see if there are cankers or wounds. This particular tree has extensive wounds to the base of the trunk, likely due to lawnmower injury. In addition, there's no root flare, indicating the tree was planted too deep or a grade change has buried the root flare. This same pattern of top dieback can also be seen in trees with internal wood decay. Here's another example with symptoms at the top of the plant. The upper half of the rhododendron has brown leaves. This is typical winter burn and desiccation. 
The leaves remain green where the level of snow provided protection from the wind and sun. The leaves above the snow line became burned and desiccated. Winter burn can be more severe in winters with snow remaining into late March and April. As you observe the symptoms on a plant or group of plants, try to note if the symptoms could be associated with any features in the landscape or any area where the plant or plants are located. Is the area a wet area? Could it be an area with poor soils or poor fertility? Is the soil in the area compacted? Does it get lots of foot traffic? Do cars park over the area, etc.? Is it a windy place? Are the plants near a road where they could receive road salt? These are all important questions to consider as part of your diagnosis. You should also note if you can see any insects. The leaf spots on this sage could easily be mistaken for a fungal leaf spot, but if we see the insect or parts of the insect, we have a better idea that the spots were caused by an insect. Here, a brown spot develops in each place this four-line plant bug feeds on the leaf. And finally, remember that the UNH Cooperative Extension Plant Diagnostic Lab and Arthropod ID Center are resources to help you identify plant problems in insects. Both are located in Spalding Hall on the UNH campus. Forms for both labs can be found at extension.unh.edu. The UNH Plant Diagnostic Lab can also be found at unhpdl.org and on Facebook at UNHPDL.